We've arrived in Albuquerque and we're checking out a brewery. one of the base malts. They keep it in a silo. They've got that much of it. Or any of our specialty malts that come into here. Yep. So you guys can come through your little entire banking. What happens is uh, there's two rollers. The first set of rollers is going to try to just crack the husk yep. and make sure we have something to filter in the mash tun. Um, the second one is going to try to uh, get get into where we can have the endosperm out yep. and so yep. we can extract the most amount of sugars. We'll use German hops and have a lot of our German style beers, like that. especially like our Pilsner. Yeah. Um, our uh, master brewer likes to use the German yeah. hops a lot. All right. It either comes in the silo or the brewers will have to put in each bag yep. themselves. Mm -hmm. So here, we have our uh, auger coming up from there. Oh, uh, yeah. And it's going to get back into our master. Yeah. So we have a beer coming up here. Yeah. Well, my garage when I'm making beer. Yes. That is on steroids. See <laughs> the size of that. So this uh, mash ton in our whole brew house is 30 barrels. Uh, a barrel is 31 US gallons. Yep. Uh, so he just got done mashing in and this is our spent grain now. Mm -hmm. And now he's just uh, getting it. We also just got a new pump. This one right here that pumps it out to the side to another one of the silos for our spent grain. All right. And we give those to farmers yep. for their local Meats. Yep. So uh, we try to extract all the uh, all the sugar from the grain from here. And once it goes over, then this this is our uh, boil kettle. It's boiling currently right now. Oh yeah. So this is where we usually add any like dextrose, yep. hops. Mhm. Mm like you said, you homebrew, so you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll usually do uh, an hour boil here. All right. And then from here, to help get any of our hop particulate out, or any of the leftover proteins and grains, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is our roll pool. Yep. So it spins around here, yep. and uh, the solids come out, and the clear beer tries to go through the middle. It smells good. Oh, it smells good. Okay. This is our orange peel and coriander. I was going to say, it smells yeah. orangey. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> the coriander. Coriander? For our double whites. All right, yeah, yeah. For our big salads. Yeah, yeah. After the whirlpool, they'll come through these process pipes, down through our pump, into our heat exchanger. And the heat exchanger has cold waters from our cold liquor tank uh -huh. and a glycol, cold glycol. At that point, that's when we will add yeast and oxygen. Our back here is going to be our 30 barrel fermenters. The fermenters uh, have a conical shape, so we can collect our yeast or we can dump it. Yep. Um, then uh, once it's all fermented, attenuated out, uh, then we'll switch it from our fermenter to our bright tanks, the ones with the flat bottoms. That's usually uh, clear beer that's ready to go, get carved up and mm -hmm. ready to package. Um, if it's not, we can add a any flavoring such as like fruit, fruit puree, artificial fruit flavor. Um, on our right hand side over here, these are 60 barrel fermenters. So those are two batches on the brew house. Uh, we'll usually have our like pilsners over there or oatmeal stouts because we sell a little bit less volume of those. And uh, for anything else, we'll come into uh, fermentation. This is so kind of you just doing this for us. I <laughs> really you. appreciate it. No problem. So this is our fermentation oh, hall. The size of our, wow. uh, the first three tanks to the left here are 120 barrels. That's uh, four turns in our brew house. Uh -huh. um, and everything else is going to be 150 barrel fermenters. So five turns. And that's usually a full from 4 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at the night uh, brewer shifts. How many work here? Um, in the back, we have roughly around 20 people. 
um, probably around 150 throughout the, the whole three tap uh, tap rooms of all the servers and yeah, us yeah. included. And one brewmaster or? We have, this is our production brew house and in our heist location, we actually have our uh, pilot system. It's a oh, yeah. 15 barrel. Uh -huh. yep. uh, so they do most of our uh, specials Fish over there. Look at the cans. Yeah, we can. also have a, a barrel room across the street that we we'll fill up uh, barrels and we'll let them wait 10 months to a year uh, for most of our beers. I was saying we have the gin barrels, bourbon barrels, right. tequila barrels, and wine barrels. Oh, really? So we do a it also various amounts. Yeah. Once it's uh, in the bright tank, ready to go, we can package it via any of our machines that we showed you. Uh -huh. Reservation bottling. it gets packaged it all ends up here in our distribution cooler and we try to keep it as long as we can uh, cold yeah oh, we nice. uh, distribute mainly to new mexico we have a little bit going to southern colorado a little bit going to arizona and a little bit going to oregon so and this is where we also keep for all our three tap rooms all our beers We did a, a brewery tour down in Costa Rica a month or so ago. It was very different. Yeah, it was, it was the other end of the, the size. The it was like a garage operation. Yeah. Here we are at Angry Goat Brewery yeah. in Costa Rica in Coco. I just love checking out breweries. And um, I heard that Albuquerque has more breweries per capita than Portland. Wow. Yeah. I believe it.